Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now, this review of the BiCC Roaster 2 helmet was actually driven by a, quite a few of the people that watch my videos and follow me on Instagram. A few people had commented on it, asked me if I'd seen it. I had, but I hadn't actually tried one, so I managed to get hold of one to be able to give it a test for you. I've been wearing it over the last week or so. We can see that this is certainly, in terms of style, a copy of another famous helmet out there. Now the question to ask is, is it any different? Is it any better? There is one key difference to this helmet which I think is going to be important to a lot of riders, so let's dig into it. So as I say, this is a brand new version of this helmet from By City, only just released. This is the full carbon version. The first thing you'll notice when you pick this up is how light the helmet is. You also notice how well finished it is, but we'll get to that later on. In terms of the weight on the helmet, it claims 1,250, give or take 50 grams. This is a size large, so I popped it on my scales and this is what we got. When you delve into the inside, it's a really plush, nicely finished helmet actually. The sort of suede effect lining is fully removable and is washable and it's velcroed into place as well instead of poppers, which I think is quite a nice touch. You don't potentially get any of those hot spots, which you can do if it's not a particularly well engineered popper solution. There's leather trim on the brow and around the neck lining as well. You also get a leather goggle strap on the back which is a nice touch and the only branding is a roadster script on the back on this particular helmet a little by city logo on the back and a small badge on here that's quite nice before they had a big one here which is a bit reminiscent of the ruby helmets and i think it just spoilt the look so having the logo put down there is very good if you've not heard of by city before they are a spanish brand they've got a huge range of what i would class as urban riding gear so a lot of protective gear they're a really popular brand in spain starting to creep into the uk there's a few retailers out there and i'll put a link to one of them in the uh, comment section down below so you can go away and have a look at their range of gear it comes in sizes extra small to extra large this is a large, which is my usual size, and it shows the measurement as 59 to 60 centimeters, and it is spot on. The visor is very clear. The vision from that is really good, but there is no provision for any kind of pin lock on there. Having said that, the ventilation in this helmet tends to be pretty good, so unless it's wet, horrible, rainy weather, you're not gonna have to worry about fogging. I didn't certainly didn't experience it. Now, I haven't ridden it in the rain, but much like the helmet that this is copying, the ceiling around the visor isn't fantastic. Rain's just gonna run down underneath that. It's gonna work its way up. But to be fair, it's probably not the sort of helmet that you're gonna be wearing all year round. I think if you lived in Spain, it's not gonna be a problem coping with a UK winter in this, mm, I'm not entirely sure. There are a few other interchangeable bits as well. So these brackets on the side here, which are quite reminiscent to another brand actually. Um, you can change those and replace those, swap the colors up. There is a tinted visor available. I spotted that on the accessory list. And uh, apart from that, there's not really much more to it. You've got a couple of small vents in the front here. Um, nice that they're just perforated metal, so you're not gonna get any flies getting through there. And there is on the inside of the chin bar, a lever for you to open and close it. It is a really nice premium piece of kit, uh, which is quite surprising when I reveal the price uh, towards the back end of the video. Don't tease. One of the things that I mentioned at the beginning about this, which sets this apart to the helmet, that this is essentially a copy of, and that this has got an intermediate oval head shape. Bells I found to be very round. I never really quite got on with my bell bullet. It never quite fitted me properly. I always had pressure on the, on the forehead in my size. If I went up a size, that was released, but I could almost turn the helmet around on my head. It was just too big. And that's the thing with bells. I don't suit a bell because I've got a head that is longer front to back, and that just doesn't suit bells. If you like the style of this helmet and you've got that head shape and oval head, this is a much, much better fit. Now, the question I always get asked when I do helmet reviews is, is it noisy? And as always respond, well, that's subjective. It depends on what you're riding, what you're wearing. But the most important thing I think for helmet noise is the fit. Now, I would say that I found this helmet quieter than the Bell Bullet, and that's because it fitted me better. 
The chin bar in photographs, if you notice, still looks to be quite close uh, as, the, as the bell was for me. But the interesting thing is that chin bar on the inside slopes outwards. So actually you've got more room. In the bell it was a square flat front. This one's got a bit of a slope to it. And I found that I, on the bell, I could move my chin and open and close the vent with it. I can't do that with this. I can't get my chin onto that chin bar at the bottom. But there's certainly more room in the chin bar. Is there anything that I don't like about this helmet? Um, well, I, I've got to be picky. Maybe the chrome trim, not so keen on that. Um, but again, that varies from helmet to helmet. I think the graphics on this actually are really nice. And that carbon fiber weave that you can see through does look really, really nice. And there's a blue tinge to it as well. So when you get this in the sun, there's that real sort of bluey kind of element to it. One thing I'm not so keen on, which I think the bell does better, is the visor closing. Now this has got a visor closing on both sides. Uh, they are magnetic, but when you shut them, they don't lock in place. When I say they don't lock in place, I mean they don't automatically snap shut. So as you drop the visor, the two sides don't engage with that magnet. You just need to give it a little push, only a light pressure, and it does it. And then it holds it very secure. I've had no issues with that visor popping up. For me, I think the bell with its little uh, magnet in the frame here that you just pull down and it goes snap shut, that was a better system. Um, but nothing wrong with this. And apart from that, I can't really find anything wrong with it. Now, as you would have picked up with any of my helmet reviews, this is a CE rated helmet. I won't review a helmet unless it's got a CE rating. It's got the ECE 2205 approval. I've not seen any news. I can't find anything about uh, any of the testing for the new 2206, um, but it is ECE approved. That's good enough for me. I do look at other ratings. Uh, you know, obviously uh, Snell ratings and I do occasionally look at the Sharp reports now. The Bell Bullet got a three star review in the Sharp report. It had very good scores for frontal and rear impacts but quite poor scores for side impacts. This hasn't been tested by Sharp so I can't give it a comparison. But the fact that it has got that CE rating, I've got no qualms about riding in this helmet. So in summary, there's not really very much more I can say about this. It's a nice looking helmet if you like this style. Uh, it's light, it's very nicely put together. It feels like a real premium product. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is if you want to put comms on it, there is a small recess in the side, but that's kind of really where your ears go. You probably could get away with putting uh, speakers in there if they're relatively low profile. There is a bit of space, but there's no cutout in the EPS now with everything that I've gone through, this looks like a decent helmet. But when you consider the price, it gets elevated a little bit more in my eyes because this Roaster 2 Carbon is available in the UK at £229.95, which is an incredible price. And if you want to save even more money and go for the standard composite helmet, that retails at just £160. Now I'm an advocate of spending as much money as you can afford on a helmet. Uh, not unnecessarily, but generally the more you spend on the helmet, the better it is. But for this style of retro helmet, that's probably not going to get the hard day-to-day -day abuse that some helmets will get. This looks like an absolute bargain to me. It's a great helmet, particularly for those people that love the look of the bullet and have tried it and just don't get on with the shape of the head. If you've got that oval shaped head, then it's definitely worth giving one of these a try. Um, I hope you found it useful. If you've got any comments or questions, then pop those in the comment sections down below. Please don't forget, if you like the video, to like it. If you want to see more of these reviews or you just want to help this channel grow, I'd be grateful if you could click on the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And all that leaves me to say is until next time, thanks for watching, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.